it in January 1, 2018. Started off super right with a hike in easily my favorite mountain bike trail, so somewhat cycling related. And adding in what you asked for, gratuitous footage of Norton doing doggo type things. Not much different than other doggo type things, but he's my dog, so. Pretty lucky here in Nova Scotia with the way that it doesn't snow too much that the trail conditions always stay relatively rideable and hikeable almost the entire way through the winter season. We pretty much get to ride all year as long as you can deal with the frigid cold that we're dealing with right now. It isn't the worst thing ever in the woods because the wind doesn't hit through all these trees but whew, my hands are dying a little bit right now, and I don't really know how Norton does it. Significantly tougher than I am. Oddly enough, I haven't heard Angelo complain one time. Just me. Obviously, I have my clothing set up totally wrong. I didn't get a new car. This is my mom's car. They went to Florida. We shouldn't get A&W, right? Now, I think a cool way to start the new year and introduce all you new people to the bikes I have and fill in uh, the bike check of the week, along with making sure that this vlog is somehow cycling related. I'd like to do like a rapid fire bike check of all the bikes I own, which at this point in time right now is at like seven bikes. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it in here because it's kind of dark and the hot water heater likes to turn on constantly. Okay, I think we're gonna do this by shooting them all outside as quick as possible, although I'm running out of daylight, uh, and then I'll do a, a voiceover in the office upstairs. So I'll make that all work somehow. Okay, so instead I'm just gonna do this makeshift set. If this looks weird, sorry. I have a white screen on me, um, no lights in my bedroom. Welcome to my bedroom. It's not the shop. But with the holiday season, I'm not at the shop. So like I said, I have seven bikes and I'm gonna go through all of them as quick as possible. And I think I'm gonna start with probably what I would consider to be the least known bike in my fleet up to the, the most known. And if you can guess which one that is, I will. <laughs> is my BMX. It's built by a company called Proper. I've had it for forever. I haven't updated anything to it really in the longest time. 
In fact, there's probably nothing about it that's really going to interest you guys as an audience too, too much. Probably the coolest things that I could bring up is the fact that it is a left side drive uh, and that it has Profile Racing hubs. Profile Racing is a company that I like a lot and I hope to uh, work with one day in my YouTube career. Next up is my Felt F5 road bike. It's probably the fanciest bike in the entire lineup, uh, but it's the one that I ride the least. And it's the one that I talk about the least because I haven't been super interested in road riding lately. It's a carbon frame with a carbon fork, of course. Those Bontrager carbon tubular wheels with continental tan wall tires. 3T handlebars and 3T stem. A mix of different level SRAM 10 speed components and uh, a specialized saddle. It's a really nice bike. I love the way it rides. And I think the biggest reason that I keep it around is because I really love the way it looks so much. I just don't ride it all that much because those small glue-on tubulars really just don't lend themselves all that well to taking off-road. Can't really be finding myself on the side of the road with a punctured tubular and in no real great way to fix it. Next up is the fake TT bike. This bike is a bike that I built out of my aluminum drop bar road bike to compete against my brother and my dad in the duathlon. Basically all I did was convert it to a 1x10 drivetrain by throwing on a narrow wide 50 tooth chainring and leaving everything else the way it was and converting from a drop bar to a time trial base bar with aero bar extensions on it and threw on a single 11 speed oddly enough bar end shifter on the uh, the right side no front shifter required because it's got that narrow wide and i always stay in the big ring while time trialing actually now that i think about it i also ordered a set forward seat post for this bike so that i could get myself into a pretty aggressive time trial position the only thing that i really hate about it is the fact that it isn't a time trial bike and it, it really kind of shows it uh it's sort of dorky looking i never got it to a point where I looked at it and said, hey, I love the way this turned out and I'm, I'm excited about it. My cross bike, my cross bike is definitely known quite well. It's a 2013 Specialized Crux E5. It's an aluminum frame, carbon fork, Avid Shorty Ultimate cantilever brakes. Uh, the stock wheels are on it right now. I do have a few sets of tubulars that go on there for race season. Uh, an FSA 120 millimeter stem with a felt drop handlebar, SRAM drivetrain, and uh, Clement tires. It was a bike that originally came with 9-speed Sora, but I converted it over to a 1x10 as well, using all SRAM parts. So 10-speed SRAM road shifters will shift a 10-speed Type 2 SRAM rear derailleur, no problem. So at the time when I built it, you could build a really inexpensive and reliable 1x10 cyclocross racing setup. These days you can just buy a cyclocross 1x10 or 1x11 drivetrain, uh, but when I built this bike, I kind of had to cobble something together. I don't know if there's anything else worth noting there. Uh, my cross-country mountain bike is the entry-level carbon bike in Felt's cross-country bike lineup. Currently on it right now, it has a mix of SRAM X9, X5, X1, and some other stuff in there to build the 1x10 drivetrain. When I replaced the Shimano 3x9 drivetrain that originally comes with this bike, it has a RockShock XC28 fork, which is sort of on its last legs. It's starting to make some weird noises that I don't love. The wheels are still stock. I imagine it's a formula hub to a no-name branded rim that, oddly enough, set up tubeless no problem. The tape was even on it. And I put on a longer road stem that actually came from the F5, along with wider specialized bars and a specialized saddle. That is all that bike is. I'm gonna say that the fixed year is probably next in line. All of you know the KHS Flight 100, the purple bike that I ride, you know, every day that I don't ride the silver bike. It's a steel frame with a steel fork using a one inch head tube, a 130 millimeter stem with a specialized handlebar that came off the crux, ramen saddle with an Evo C post because these things use super annoying 26.8 eight seat posts instead of 27.2. Formula hubs to open pro and open sport rims, a SRAM Omnium crank set, and a 49.15 gear ratio with a bunch of tape on the rear cog. I don't, I don't really know what's going on here. I think someone's pranking me. I really like that bike. I'm gonna have that bike for a long time. And then of course, everybody's favorite spin dat bike that really doesn't need any introduction whatsoever. It's the specialized 
tri cross, the raw cross, the cadence bike. It's the one that I stripped all the paint off of because I said I wanted to. It's got the weird zebra print fork. It's an aluminum specialized tri cross frame with a Jameis carbon fork, avid shorty six brakes, no name wheels that I built myself, tan wall pan eraser 38 millimeter pacellas, FSA gossamer handlebars, a zip stem, a zip seat post and a specialized Adventure Gear Phenom saddle. The drivetrain on this bike has been on its last legs for the last forever that I've owned it. It's a SRAM Force 10 speed shifter setup to a X7 rear derailleur and a rival front derailleur. A very old Shimano style set of FSA Gossamer cranks with FSA chain rings. It's regular cyclocross gearing, 4636, with whatever cassette that I have. I just don't really care if it doesn't work that great. If I can shift all the way to the top of the cassette, great. If I can shift all the way to the bottom, even better. That's why the Tricross is my favorite bike. <laughs> Okay, so that's a very rapid fire and quick way of learning about all of the bikes that I own. I know some of you seem sort of surprised when you see some of the bikes that I ride in some videos. So those are the bikes that I currently own right now in the beginning of 2018. Uh, it'd be very interesting for the beginning of 19 to compare this video to, uh, to the bikes that I might or might not have at the beginning of 2019. That was kind of why I wanted to do this. Everything's working against me right now. I can't get this to stay on. These lights are no good and the sound is terrible. So thank you so much for watching. I'll be back in the shop tomorrow. We'll make a good video there and we'll get back into the swing of things.